Good morning and happy Easter to everyone and welcome to worship. And to start us off, I'm actually going, I was going to, would have done a children's time to start our morning. And so I videoed myself yesterday um, doing a children's time. And so we're going to share this to start our worship together. Good morning and happy Easter, one in Christ Parish. Kids, I need your help this morning to start worship because at the beginning of Lent, we hid something at each of our churches that we were going to find on Easter. And so you remember that we hid a poster at the beginning of Lent and we're here at Nazareth starting off our morning and we need to remember where we hid it. Do you remember? Oh, that's right. We hid it over here behind the statue. Let's see if it's still here. Ah, yes, it is. Ah. Oh my goodness, it is here and it is beautifully decorated. Okay kids, now we are here at Our Savior's Greenwood and we need to find that poster that we put away at the beginning of Lent. Do you remember where we put that here? Can you help me remember? Oh, that's right. We put it right back here, didn't we? Let's see if it's still there. It is, and beautifully decorated on the front and on the back. Awesome. All right, kids, we're here at Emmanuel. Let's go inside the church and find our poster. Oh, wait, that's right. We weren't in church when we hid that. It's over in the parish hall. And do you remember where we hid it? Where was it? Oh, you're right, we hid it in the cupboard. Let's go take a look. Okay, kids, we're here at the cupboard. Let's take a look. It's still here. And beautifully decorated, too. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! It was still dark on the morning of the first day of the week when Mary Magdalene went to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been removed. She ran to tell Simon Peter and the disciple Jesus loved. They had taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple ran to the tomb. The other disciple got there first and bent to look in. He saw the linen cloth lying there, but did not go in. Simon Peter went into the tomb when he arrived. He also saw the linen cloth, and the cloth used to cover the face was folded and set aside. The other disciple came in and believed. They did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus must be raised from the dead. Then the disciples went home. Mary stood outside of the tomb and cried. As she cried, she knelt to look into the tomb. She saw two angels, each dressed in white, sitting where the body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. One asked why she was crying. They have taken my Lord away, and I don't know where they have put him. When she said that, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't recognize him. Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? Mary thought he was the gardener. Sir, if you took him, tell me where you put him and I will get him. Mary. Teacher. Do not hold on to me. I have yet ascended to the, I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go and tell my brothers and sisters that I am going to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene left and told the disciples all of what Jesus said. I have seen the Lord. This is the gospel of our risen Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Well, good morning again, church, and... Uh, a happy Easter to you on this 
day of weather that we did not expect or maybe want. <laughs> so um, sort of in this era of having to stay home for COVID-19, I thought, well, today is a different reason, right? We have um, have to stay in because of the weather. So if any of you do need to travel later today, I wish you traveling mercies. But otherwise, we're staying home because of the snow. And um, as a reminder, um, also uh, for Zoom, if you want to see everybody who's on the, um, the call with us, push the gallery view in your upper right-hand corner. Or on your phone, you can swipe to see more people. So grace and peace to you this morning from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. As I was preparing for preaching this morning, I ran across an Easter poem that one of my seminary professors wrote a number of years ago. And it's called Easter is Coming. And it's one of those poems where when you read it from top to bottom, it has one meaning. And then when you read from the bottom back up to the top, it has another meaning. And so I want to read this um, this morning and then continue on from there. So this is called Easter is Coming. Easter is coming, but for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today. Death has the last word. It would therefore be foolish to say that the life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. Why? Might makes right. Power is superior to compassion and despair is stronger than hope. So I refuse to believe a man came back from the dead. Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. Resurrection is a false hope. How can you say an empty tomb changes everything? Don't you see God loves the world is a lie? Money is God, and the one who dies with the most toys wins. I will tell you what I tell my children. There is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. Many of us simply do not believe that God can give life to the, to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. But now what if the testimony of the women at the tomb of Mary and the disciples is true, and that foolishness of the cross actually makes a difference. And now I'm going to read from the bottom up and hear how that message changes when we believe in that foolishness of the cross. God can give life to the dead, bring light from darkness, and create something out of nothing. Many of us simply do not believe that there is nothing sacred about ordinary things and people. There is no mystery in everyday life, and there is no more to this world than what you can see, hold, and buy. I will tell you what I tell my children, that the one who dies with the most toys wins and money is God is a lie. Don't you see? God loves the world. An empty tomb changes everything. How can you say resurrection is a false hope? Sometimes the most important facts are the hardest to accept. A man can come back from the dead. So I refuse to believe that despair is stronger than hope, that power is superior to compassion and might makes right. Why? The life and death of a first century Jew named Jesus makes a difference. It would therefore be foolish to say that death has the last word. There is too much pain and suffering in the world today. But for many of us, this is not the ultimate reality. Easter is coming. 
and Easter is coming and Easter is here today. And I know we often put extra, you know, tupla and storytelling around this celebration of Easter, but every Sunday is a resurrection day where we proclaim Christ crucified and risen. And, but back to that, to that poem, and as a, this week I was thinking, when we speak plainly about Jesus Christ, right, like, this man who died, lived and died 2,000 years ago and came back to life, it can seem like foolishness, like it doesn't make sense. It reminds me of um, Paul in the letter to the first Corinthians. He writes, the cross is foolishness to those who do not believe, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. It is life. Because that foolishness of the cross, that strength is in weakness, that life and resurrection can happen you know we are we are fools together for christ and the world was changed because of him the testimony of mary and the, the disciples echoes through the ages i have seen the risen lord and i have experienced the promises that are true and those encounters that we have today where experiencing power and strength beyond our own strength and even now, in these days, seeing the love and compassion that people are sharing with one another, that is care born of the Spirit of God. And in all of this, beloved child of God, Jesus calls us, you and I, to go and tell. To tell of times when we hope, even in challenging situations, where we speak of the Holy Spirit's presence with us, in times of joy and sorrow. We speak of times when we see the resurrection promise of new life in unexpected ways. God in Christ is with you because he promises he will be. And new life comes because Christ has triumphed over death. So go and tell and live in this promise of new life. Thanks be to God. Amen. All right, and receive this blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with new hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. And now may you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.